Hello, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Gorski back. And today what we're gonna be doing, we're going to be doing a new kind of graph called line plots. But before we go ahead and get started with that, I wanna review the two types of graphs that we've done before. The first one is your bar graph here, and then we have a pictograph over here. So first let's talk a little bit about the bar graph. Let's remember every graph is going to have a title. Why are titles important? Titles are important because it gives us a little snapshot of what this graph is going to be talking about. So in this bar graph, their title is favorite places to go. And then they had three choices. Because remember, also on every graph, in order to gather the data or information, they have to be asked a question. So this one was obviously, where would they like to go? So they had the choice of movies, park, or zoo. So notice also on your bar graph, they have these numbers going up the side. And if you remember, that is called a scale. A scale is gonna tell us how many we need to color in on our particular graph here in order to show the data that was collected. So for the movies, I could see there were five because it goes up to the number five on our scale. Park has eight and the zoo has six. So just by looking at that scale, that helps me to determine exactly how many people voted for each place. Okay, let's go to our pictograph. Pictographs are different. If you notice, yes, it does have a title just like the bar graph does. However, we are not looking at a scale to determine the amount of votes because looking at their question, their question was the favorite subject. So they had to choose from math, reading or social studies. Now remember, no scale, but we have this down here. If you remember what that is called, it was a key. So the key determines how we are gonna count each picture on our pictograph. So the pencil is gonna equal one vote a piece. So looking again, I see that math has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight votes. Reading has one, two, three, four, five, six votes, and social studies has one, two, three votes. So it's a, totally fine that you can count those votes. You're counting each one by one according to what the key is telling us. And I do have to say, I'm pretty happy that math won on that one. Okay, now we're gonna be heading into the line plot. So the line plot is definitely gonna be looking different. So here is a blank line plot graph. Now, where I do see things that are the same is over here with our favorite pets title. We also have some data was that was collected. Remember, you could look at data in different ways. This data was looked at as the tally marks, which is totally fine. But when we put our information on our line plot, Notice how it's gonna be put on a number line. And I wanted to make this one kind of more kid friendly. So instead of looking at either numbers or words, I decided to show you a picture because this one is called favorite pets. So we asked certain folks what their favorite pet was. And here's all our data that we collected from that particular question. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to come out of present mode and we are gonna to work together in order to fill this line plot according to what we collected in our data. So here we go. When we start putting information in line plots, we are not going to be coloring like a bar graph or we're not gonna be putting in pictures. We are going to be showing the information by X's or sometimes people might put dots to show each vote. However, it is going to be counted each one as one. So we're not gonna be worried about a key changing that you could change the way that you count or a bar graph as you're looking in a scale. We're kind of like combining the two really um, into this line plot. And I'm gonna show you once we start putting our information on here. So if you're looking at our dog, notice how the tally marks show the dog has five votes. So that means if each X is gonna be counted as one, 
I'm going to click and drag five X's over my dog. So here I have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so basically I have five X's over my dog, which is going to show that there were five votes. Okay, and it's just going to look like that straight up and down. So now let's go to our bunny. My bunny, according to the information, has three. So that means I'm going to click and drag three X's over my bunny. So one, two, and three. Okay, now my cat. My cat, according to my tally marks, has four. So yet again, click and drag four over the cat. One, two, three, and four. All right. Now the last one is the turtle. Turtle has two. You know what we have to do. Put two X's over my turtle. So notice how line plots kind of, it's a good combination of a picto, kind of showing the picture with the X's, and our bar graph showing these items going up and down. So it's a good little combination. Now, what we could start doing is asking some questions about our graph. So here's my first question. Which pet was the most popular? So that might be different in your opinion, but according to what our line plot shows us, who do you think was the most popular? Who do you think got the most votes? Now, maybe some of you might need to count. Maybe some of you might just be looking with your eyes and you could definitely see the dog was the most popular. Why? Because he has five votes. You also, you could also see it because it has like that highest number of X's on that line plot. All right, new question. Which pet has the least votes? Well, judging by what you see on this line plot, what one do you think has the least? You could simply see the turtle has the least. Why? Because he only has two votes. Here's a tougher question. Which two pets, when you combine them together, would equal five votes? So understand too, on a line plot, the questions that could be asked could get a little tricky. So this is a trickier one. Which two pets could equal out to five votes? Well, if you get those simple addition skills going, you're going to find the two pets that will equal five would be the bunny and the turtle. Because three plus two equals five. One, two, three four, five. There you have it. Now, here's another question. How many people voted all together? What do you think you're going to have to do there? Well, in order to find that out, that means you need to count every single X because each X is one vote. So let's go ahead and count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we had fourteen people answer the survey question. All right, ready? I want to go to the next one. So here's our next line plot. So notice how my information is going to look a little different here. Let me put it in present mode so you can see it a little bit bigger. So notice how I have a table of information. My last one had tally marks. This one has a table and it has like a mixture of all different measurements, which are in inches, which matches the sunflowers down at the bottom because the title of this particular line plot is measuring sunflowers. 
So we're not necessarily answering a question. We're collecting data. Maybe somebody is out in a beautiful sunflower field measuring sunflowers. And these are the measurements they came out to, which was four inches, five inches, six inches, or seven inches. So what we're going to do, we are going to exit out and we're going to start putting in the data according to what we see here on the table. So notice how I have the table arranged by different colors. I have a blue row, I have a purple row, and I have a red row. So I want to keep it organized. We're going to start with the blue row here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with four inches. I'm going to click and drag on an X and put it over my four just like this. Now, the next one was five inches. So I'm not gonna put it over my four because it's talking about the five inch mark. So here I go. Now the next one is seven. And the last one is going to be five, again. So let's now go to the purple row. I'm gonna start with a seven inch. Then I'm gonna go back to four. Now I have two more sevens back to back. So let me go ahead and put two more sevens on. Now let's go to the final red row. So I'm gonna start with a six this time. Then I go back to a seven. Then I'm gonna to go to a five. Then I'm gonna go back to a seven. Okay, so now notice how I did that. I tried to keep everything nice and organized and then I placed my data exactly where it needed to go in the line plot. So now, question time. Our first question is, which sunflower was measured the most? So this person was out in the sunflower field. How, what particular measurement of sunflower was the most? So if I'm looking at my line plot, obviously it's going to be seven inches because it's the largest kind of line that we have going vertically. And we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six of them were measured at seven inches. So which one? was the least. So which measurement measured the least? The least amount of sunflowers. So if you're looking, that's an easy peasy. One was measured at the six inches, which was the least. All right, that was an easy one. Here's another question. How many sunflowers were measured at five inches? Well, I look at five inches, I could see one, two, three sunflowers were measured at five inches, simply because it's showing you right there on that line plot. Now, remember when we talk about we could have tricky questions? Here comes a tricky question for you. The tricky question is, which sunflower was the shortest? Now, for someone that you're just so used to looking at information in a line plot, you're going to automatically, I know where your eyes could be going, right here, right to the six, because that had the least, because we actually did talk about that in our first question. But remember, sometimes questions could be asking you a little tricky, and that's a tricky one which sunflower was the shortest. Not necessarily was measured the least, but who was the shortest sunflower? Well, if you're looking at this line plot and this number line, the shortest sunflower was this one right here, four, because that's the smallest number of inches that this particular person was measuring those sunflowers at. So I hope you answered that question correctly. I hope you weren't tricked. Okay, boys and girls, I hope that you have an opportunity 
maybe to go back and take a look at some of these graphs that we talked about today and maybe make up some of your own questions. Maybe you could go back up into our first slide and we could look at that graph review with the bar graph and picture graph and maybe you could ask some of your own questions too. So I hope you enjoyed our line plot lesson today. I will be talking to you soon and have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.